Hi there, this is Jordan Anos, and I'm going to walk you through an example LLM inference setup. Uh, you can see on screen here, I'm working with a Cray XD670 today. And what that means is that I have eight H100 80 gig GPUs to work with, all in a single system, single Linux operating system. What I'm going to do is set up some inference endpoints, specifically uh, I've got a VLLM container that is serving the Llama 3.1 Instruct 8B model on a single GPU. I've got another one that's serving Mistral 7B Instruct uh, 0 0.3 on another GPU. And then I've got a third VLLM container that serves the Llama 3.1 70B model. This one's larger, so it requires two GPUs just to run. And these are running in three separate Docker containers. The last thing that I have is a, a Olama container. Olama is a runtime just like VLLM, but what it does is dynamically serve the requested models using the Llama CPP backend. Uh, and in this case, I'll show you how we can kind of switch between different models on th these four GPUs and how you know only the models that are busy and being requested by users are actually loaded into GPU memory space uh, for use. Uh, in order to interact with these models, I'm setting up Open Web UI. This is from the Olama project, and is very you know easy to get started with. Save chat history, upload files, and connect to different model endpoints, whether they're running locally, like we're doing in this case, or whether they run remotely. Uh, so what I've done is actually just connected Open Web UI to the four different ports that need to be opened, um, and in this case. It's all local, so the ports don't need to be open and exposed. They just need to be um, open between the containers, the one that's running Open Web UI and the one that's running these um, model endpoints. Open Web UI can serve all sorts of different users, and you can upload all sorts of different files, pipelines, functions, things like that. So let's jump over and see the setup. Um, the first thing to look at is just an output from NVIDIA SMI. You can see that I basically have the VLLM containers running persistently, and they're consuming, you know, the eighth GPU, ID number seven, um, for the, the VLLM endpoints. Um, in this case, uh, Llama 3.1 is there. Then we've got Mistral, and then we've got 3.170B on the other two. And you can see that there's no running processes for the Olama container that has the first four GPUs. And right now, that, that you can verify that by seeing that only seven megabytes of memory is consumed compared to the others where, you know, they're all filled up, basically. So let's jump over to Open Web UI and kind of verify this. Basically, we can see that my default model is Mistral 7B, and I can say, hello, how are you, and get a quick response. The same is true if I scroll through my list and I click over to the 8B Instruct model, and I ask it in the same chat, how are you? It gives a nice response. And same thing for the 70B model, and I can um, ask it how it's going. You can see that this is a little bit slower. That's because we've got a larger model running across two GPUs. The output's always going to be slower than smaller models running on roughly the same amount of compute. Um, you know, roughly 10 times smaller model running on half the amount of compute is still going to run faster than uh, a bigger model on uh, more GPUs. So an example of what I might do as a user is I might, you know, verify um, differences between the models. So in this case, um, please help me design a slogan for the launch of a top secret HPE server, the DL384 Gen 12. It features the NVIDIA Grace Hopper GH200, Grace Hopper Super Chip. So we can see that uh, Llama 3.170B Instruct is coming up with some slogans. That looks pretty nice. And uh, I can quickly, you know, for the next query, switch over to 8B, say, more slogans. Maybe that's quicker, but maybe it's lower quality compared to the other ones because it's a, a smaller model. 
Now you can see in my dropdown that I also have an opportunity to load some other models in here. In this case, I've got Gemma, Gemma, Gemma 2 9B and 27B, Gemma 3.1405, and I've got um, 3.170, uh, and the older Llama 3, as well as Mistral Nemo. Uh, Gemma 2 9B looks good, so I'm going to bring that into the chat. Now, the unique thing about this is that um, if I do it, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to load up. And what's actually happening on the system is that we've started a new process on GPU ID 0 to actually load up the 9B model. Uh, because Olama is able to dynamically load models in and out of GPU memory. So 9B is here. We can go with 27B and um, uh, write a blog post using the um, following slogan. Just like with the 9B model, you can see that we're loading in this 27B model into memory, this time on the um, GPU with ID 1. Um, it's consuming some memory there. And basically, we're you know, now um, getting a blog post you know, written back from a different model. Uh, I'll show you another thing that I can do here. In this case, uh, let's switch over to the Nemo model to keep exercising the GPUs. But in this case, I'm actually going to upload a file in context. Um, I'm going to grab a PDF with the quick specs of the DL384 Gen 12 server. And I'm going to say rewrite the blog post using information about power consumption. Uh, of the server. In this case, again, we can watch the processes start up. There's one that's starting on GPU with ID 2, the third GPU in my system, and it loads in the Mistral Nemo model and gives a, uh, gives a response. In this case, um, you can see that there's power consumption being referenced here in peak conditions, 1625. We know that this Grace Hopper system consumes a lot of the uh, a lot of power with these um, 900 watt super chips. So good to see that reference grounded in there. Um, a nice thing about this also is that we can start new chats and uh, and you know kind of dynamically change between these and support many different users. So in this last example. Um, I'm going to keep going with the Mistral Nemo model and start chatting about something else. Uh, explain which emojis you know about. So, um, nice output from Mistral Nemo explaining all of the, emoji, the emojis that it knows about. So in summary, um, this is an example alum inference setup that really gets people started um, where they have full control over the, um, the, the interaction with models. Um, you have control over which models you work with so that if you'd like to fine tune them or improve performance or add data through uh, retrieval augmented generation or just upload data in context like I just did, you have control over that. You don't expose your data um, to the external world, you know, this is all happening within the network of one of our HPE labs that I'm using right now. Um, nothing is going to other, uh, you know, to public APIs or traversing the public internet. Um, none of the data is being uploaded to a, a service where I have, you know, potential counterparty risk from those who are, are providing that service to me. And I have full control over my costs and investment in a Cray XD670 server, whether it's purchased up front and installed in your data center or your co-location, or it's consumed through HPE GreenLake, you know, you have full control over the cost profile. You don't have to pay per user or per token that's input or output. Whatever you want to run on this system, you have full control and independence to run it yourself. In summary, um, you know, we're excited to continue working on example LLM inference setups uh, where organizations have full control and scale up to larger models, 
uh, larger systems with multiple models, all sorts of data, and uh, really bring the compute to the data, not the data to the compute. Thanks for taking the time to learn about uh, the Cray XD670 using this example LLM inference setup.